All right, well, welcome back to part two of our prophecy update for New Year's Eve 2021. Uh, this second message is interesting. It's a little weird. It's a little creepy, um, but it is prophetic. It is sorcery and Satanism on the rise. And uh, whether you have seen this or whether you have observed it yourself, it is happening uh, in the music, uh, with the, um, the actors, the musicians, the rappers. Uh, you remember uh, Little Nas X came out, this gay, um, homosexual, uh, African-American rapper who is a full-blown Satanist. Not for show, he's a Satanist. It's what he believes. Satanist is God. He put out a video uh, back on Good Friday of 2021, um, it was uh, a, a CGI computer animated video where he was having sex, homosexual sex with the devil. I think it was shared something like 50 million times on social media uh, within the first week or something like that. Uh, he then used that to springboard to sell his new shoes, which were the um, Luke 10, 18 shoes with a drop of human blood in every pair. He sold them for $1,018 based on Luke chapter 10, verse 18, which says, I saw, saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And he uh, sold 666 pairs of these shoes, and they were sold out before he could even put them out on the market. Uh, there was such an interest in these shoes with human blood in them as uh, a Satanist. And so uh, there's, there's a lot of Satanism going on. It's becoming more and more acceptable. There's a lot of sorcery and witchcraft. All of this is predicted to be happening in the last days with greater frequency and intensity like the birth pangs of a woman as we get closer and closer to the rapture of the church and the return of Jesus Christ. I want to start off this second session here this evening in Revelation <clears throat> chapter 9. If you will please turn there with me if you have your Bibles. Again, good evening to everyone who's at home watching online. We're glad you're tuning in as well. Sorry you couldn't be with us here in person tonight. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 20 says this. <clears throat> this is after the sixth trumpet judgment. Revelation 9.20. But the rest of mankind, or the human race, who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons. So demon worship is going to be prominent and prevalent in the tribulation period. So we would expect to see demon and Satan worship uh, coming with greater frequency and intensity as we get closer to that time. But they didn't repent of their worship of demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or of their sorceries or of their sexual immorality, sexual perversion, or of their thefts. So all of these things are going to be commonplace during the tribulation period. Uh, and so we would expect to see an increase in all of this as we get closer to that time. Demon worship, idolatry, murders, sorceries, sexual perversion, and theft. And it's interesting that the word sorcery there in uh, our Bibles is translated from the Greek word pharmakia. And the Greek word pharmakia basically means the use of mind-altering agents or substances in order to enter into an altered state of consciousness to contact demon spirits or to, uh, you know, penetrate the veil that separates the physical from the spiritual realm for the purpose of shamanic like shamans or medicine men contact with these demons or the demonic realm and so this is going to be uh, prevalent and prominent in the last days sorcery or or pharmakia or even the idea of hallucinogenic drug use which is now legalized in this country you could buy lsd legally in this country and mushrooms and all the rest all these things that had been banished for years and years because people lost their minds on these drugs they're now legal they're using them in legal ways uh, from prescriptions with doctors uh, for treating mental illness and so forth and they're already having all sorts of problems with this there's people that are going off uh, and they're dosing more and more and more with this lsd and then they're uh, they're just getting lost in their head on a trip in you know the universe or uh, whatever and so this is exactly what the bible predicted would be the case 
In the last days, there would be this mind-altering drug use, this pharmakia, this demon worship in the last days. There's also just full-out Satan worship in the last days. I mean, it's, it would have been unthinkable 100 years ago uh, to read these scriptures and believe that the world be worshiping Satan, that the world be willing to worship Satan rather than worship God or worship Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what the Bible predicted would happen in the last days and exactly uh, what we see happening today. In Revelation chapter 12, for example, we read this. Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them down to the earth. This dragon is identified as the devil and Satan in verse 9. So the great dragon, verse 9, was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Remember, Jesus said that Satan is a liar from the beginning and he's the father of all lies. Remember, he lied to Eve in the Garden of Eden. He said, you're not going to die uh, if you eat of the tree of the forbidden fruit, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to become like God. So he's a liar. He lies. That's, he lies from his nature. When he lies, that's who he is. He is a liar. Just like God is the truth and God cannot lie, Satan really can't tell the truth. He's a liar. That's his nature. And everything he does, even when he tells truth, it's a spin of the truth in order to deceive. But he's going to be cast out of heaven at this time. The great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, that, who deceives the whole world. And he was cast to the earth and his angels, his demons, the fallen angels, were cast out with him. We just saw that he took a third of the angels with him in his fall. Those angels later became demons. Then I heard a loud voice, Revelation 12, 10, saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Verse 12, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. And this is what is going to kick off the last three and a half year period of the tribulation period, which is called the great tribulation period. Jesus said it's going to be so bad during the great tribulation period that no flesh would survive it if those days were not cut short. So for the sake of the elect, primarily Israel, his elect, because the church is going to be taken out off of the scene before this time, we believe. Uh, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then we read in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 11. The Antichrist demanding to be worshipped as God. <clears throat> Revelation 13 verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. This is the false prophet. He exercises all of the authority of the first beast in his presence. The first beast would be the Antichrist. <clears throat> and he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast or the Antichrist whose deadly wound was healed. So notice here that the whole earth is going to have to worship the devil's man, the Antichrist at this time, the earth and the, all those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Full-blown Satan worship at this time. They're worshiping the Antichrist in the place of Jesus Christ. And it's going to be required of them. It is going to be demanded uh, of them. We read back in verse 3 something else that's interesting about this prophecy. Revelation 13, 3. 
He says, I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. So this, one of the heads is one of the leaders of this uh, confederacy of kings or nations or leaders of nations that are going to rule the world. One of these uh, rulers is going to be mortally wounded, uh, an assassination attempt of some sort, probably because it was a wound with a sword, but he's going to be healed. So it's going to be a counterfeit resurrection, just like Jesus Christ was Killed and resurrected, the Antichrist is going to appear to be killed and come back to life. And it says in verse 3, the latter part, And the whole world, all the world marveled and followed the beast. So notice it had to be in a time when the whole world could follow a leader, when the whole, whole world could observe something happening. All at the same time, all over the world. Everybody's going to be able to see this. Well, 50 years ago, the technology wasn't there for that to happen. 100 years ago or 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago, it was not possible for the whole world to observe something happening all at one time in Jerusalem. But today, of course, with technology uh, that the Antichrist is going to take control over, the whole world is going to see this, the whole world is going to marvel it, and the whole world is going to follow the Antichrist, the devil's man. So they worshiped the dragon, Revelation 13, 4. Full-blown worship of Satan. They worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, the Antichrist. And they worshiped the beast, the Antichrist, saying, who was like the beast and who was able to make war against him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue for 42 months or three and a half years, the Great Tribulation period. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints. These are the tribulation saints. And to overcome them. We know this can't be the church because Jesus said the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. And the Antichrist is going to prevail against these saints. Saints just means holy ones. The word church is never mentioned uh, after Revelation chapter 3 uh, until you get to Revelation 19 when the church is in heaven. The church is never mentioned on the earth during the tribulation period, any of it. Um, but he's going to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given to him over every tribe and tongue and nation, and all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So this is full-blown satanic worship on an unprecedented global scale. This is what is predicted to happen. So as we get closer and closer to the time of the end, we would Expect to see people worshiping Satan and worshiping demons. And that is exactly what we see happening. Uh, and it's everywhere, uh, especially in America, but it's everywhere all over the world. Uh, America is actually uh, the satanic temple or the satanic church uh, is uh, growing faster in the United States than anywhere else in the world. And as you know, America exports everything to the whole world. I just want to start with something simple here, and then we'll get into some, some other more detailed um, articles about uh, this idea of satanic worship. <clears throat> there are t-shirts now being sold in regular stores in the mall. Um, I was, I, I, I'm still amazed. I'm appalled. I mean, we, we, we were shopping at Tilly's over the summer. Tilly's is like a skateboard kind of shop, surfer, kind of a cool shop. They have them here in Visalia. They have it at the Tulare Outlet Malls. They have a store in the Bakersfield Mall. They're all over the place. And uh, they're a very popular store, very commonly uh, shopped at store by young people. And kind of edgy, kind of cutting edge. But they have normal brands and stuff like that. But they were selling full-blown Satan t-shirts for sale. And I couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. I started taking pictures on my phone of these t-shirts because I wanted to document this uh, and use it in a sermon. But um, I, I'm just going to look at four of these t-shirts that were on sale this summer. There are more than that, but this is four of the t-shirts that were on sale this summer in Tilly's. They're probably still on sale today. If you go to Tilly's and say, I want to look at your satanic t-shirts, they'll show you right where the section is. Uh, and you could see them for yourself. The first one, and uh, you probably can't see this here um, in the audience, but at home perhaps they'll be able to see what this says. It says on the front of this t-shirt, or I think this was actually a sweatshirt, it says Satan University. It's a sweatshirt. Emblaze it on the front with Satan University, and then it says the Valley of Broken Dreams, 
And then it has three Latin words, mendacium, dolo, and frodato, right here. Three Latin words for Satan University, mendacium, dolo, and frodato. Or frodato. And when you look up the meaning of these words, mendacium means a liar, an untruth, or a falsehood. That's the first word describing these who attend Satan University. Second, dolo simply means deceit or deception. The third word, fraudato, means a fraud, somebody who's a fraudulent person. And so basically, they're wearing Satan University, a liar, a deceiver, a trickster, a fraud, the valley of broken dreams. The next one. This one says... Misfortunes. It's got a little happy little devil on the front of the t-shirt. And it says, misfortunes. The devil is in the details. And then it says, fortunes made, fortunes lost, past, present, and futureless is what it says. These are t-shirts that young people are running around in high school, perhaps junior high, college campuses, wearing because this is edgy and it's cool. But it is satanic. The devil is in the details. The third one has a picture of Satan himself like a salesman with his little horns. And it says, sell your soul. Call now 1-800-DEVIL-PACT. Okay, these are real t-shirts that people are buying and wearing in our culture. When would you have thought even 10 years ago that, that they would even be able to sell satanic t-shirts like this without there being an uproar from the community? Why is there just crickets? Why is there silence? Well, because we are getting closer and closer to the time where the devil is going to be here uh, to uh, rule over this world. Sell your soul. Call now. 1-800-DEVIL-PACT. And the fourth one has a little devil standing here with his little devil tail. And it's like a sign on the road. And the sign says Highway 666 with an arrow that says to hell pointing down. And then an arrow to, uh, uh, to the left, pointing west. Hell is pointing down. West is pointing left. And then the little devil is hitchhiking, and he asks the question, going my way? Going my, well? my, going my way? To hell on Avenue 666. So you could see it, say they're just trying to be cool, they're just trying to be edgy, they're just trying to, whatever, shock people to make money. But this is conditioning the young people to worship and accept the Antichrist. There is um, another article here. This was, I found this interesting. My, my wife Anna shared this with me the other night. Um, this is the book of Jesus. And the question is, has Kanye West written his own Bible? This is an article dated 12-9 of 2021 on Al-Ba'waba Al -Baba, uh, website. I believe it is a Saudi Arabian website. Last year, famous American rapper Kanye West made headlines when he announced plans to run for U.S. president during the 2020 race. His bid then failed quickly. Two months ago, he changed his name to Ye, or ye, like shortened ver, uh, uh, word for Yahweh, right? Ye, reminding social media of a Bible that he wrote a few years ago. In 2014, Kanye West, or Ye, published his own version of what he called the book of Jesus. And he calls his name Jesus now. Now he calls his name Ye. In which he replaced every mention of God with his own name. At that time, the book received considerable media attention, but was quickly forgotten by fans and commentators who thought it showed just how much ego this rapper has. However, conversation about Kanye's book resurfaced online again with tweets expressing shock over his daring move, calling it a Bible for the modern day. Some also questioned whether or not he can be described as a narcissist based on not only his Bible, Book of Jesus, but also other statements that he has made over the years. Kanye's statements have always ignited questions over his mental health, especially after he opened up 
about suffering from mental health issues for years during a YouTube interview in 2019. I did some more digging on this. He actually didn't write this. He took credit for it. He didn't write this book or this Bible. It was another group of three men who were anonymous who published it in his name who were his followers. I believe it was back in 2014. So you have, um, you know, very famous musicians basically calling themselves Jesus and changing the Bibles to remove every name of God and putting their name in God's place. Satanism on the rise. And we're not shocked by it anymore, right? I mean, it's like, oh, big deal. He's just crazy. But it's all conditioning the young people because he's very, very popular still. Third article. This was just before Christmas time. Uh, This was on a, a Fox News affiliate out of Chicago. And the title of this article is such. Satanic holiday display installed at the Illinois State Capitol. I mentioned this in a sermon a week or two ago. And it's this hideous little baby evil wicked goat that's in a little baby manger right there in the rotunda of uh, Chicago State House where they, you know, be like in Sacramento or in, you know, uh, uh, D.C. or New York or some state capital. This is Chicago, Illinois, and it was put there by the Church of Satan using their religious freedoms to exercise their freedom of religion, and it's right there, right before Christmas, set up right next to a Christmas tree. You can look this up online. In Springfield, Illinois, a satanic, or it's from Springfield, Illinois, the article, a satanic holiday display has made a reappearance under the Illinois State Capitol Dome. I stand corrected. The the, uh, capital of Illinois is Springfield. I apologize. Uh, Members of the Satanic Temple of Illinois came to Springfield, Illinois, Monday, to install a satanic display in the rotunda. The installation depicts the deity Baphomet as a baby. Satanic temple members said that the display is meant to represent plurality, unity, compassion, empathy, and it's described as a display of positive values. But we just read that the Satanists lie through their teeth. Remember what Satan University said? You know, liar, deceitful, fraudulent. So you can't believe anything the Satanists say. They're liars. They don't care about telling the truth. So they say it's representing unity, compassion, empathy. Quote, the Capitol welcomes diverse range of religions every year to display holiday statues during the holiday season. So we wanted to join in on that, unquote, said Satanic Temple of Illinois minister Adam said. His name was Adam is what he said. Minister Adam did not provide a surname. Just feet away from the satanic display, members of the Catholic group American Society for the Defense of Tradition, Family, and Property gathered to protest. Parishioners held banners reading, Satan has no rights, uh, and uh, they say Mary crushes the serpent because they worship Mary in the Catholic Church. Not, <laughs> I mean, they worship Jesus too, but they uh, put Mary right on par with Jesus in the Catholic Church. So they say Mary crushes Satan, but it's Jesus Christ who crushes Satan's head. Uh, in Revelation chapter 3, the seed of the woman crushes the head of the serpent. On November 30th, the Springfield Diocese installed a nativity scene in the rotunda. During that installation, Bishop Thomas Paprocki said there was no place for satanic displays in the capital or anywhere. The Satanic Temple of Illinois said they invited Paprocki to participate in the installation of their display, but he did not make an appearance. The Baphomet statue is on loan from the Satanic Temple in Salem, Massachusetts, where the witch trials, interesting, uh, took place back in the 1600s. A sign from the state of Illinois sits in the rotunda in front of all the holiday displays and says, quote, the state of Illinois is required by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution to allow temporary public display in the state capitol so long as these displays are not paid for by taxpayer dollars because the first floor of the capitol rotunda is a public place. State officials cannot legally censor the content of speech or displays. The United States Supreme Court has held that public officials may legally impose reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions regarding displays and speech, but no regulation can be based on the content of that speech. So they're taking advantage of our First Amendment freedom of religion rights as though Satanism is a legitimate, established, recognizable, embraced 
and um, um, appreciated religion in the United States. So since when is the Satanic Temple an established and accepted religion in the United States? Only in 2021, apparently. They've been going out there and putting these statues up uh, in, in state houses all over the country for, uh, for a while. But it's just, it's just amazing to me. It's just sickening, uh, and it is appalling to me. And if you look at the picture of that goat, it's, it's uh, disgusting. It's, it's uh, like a hermaphrodite in the sense that it has genitals of a male and a female, uh, uh, which is common in the occult and in um, Eastern mysticism and Eastern gods and so forth. Uh, another article here, this is from the LA Times, and this article is uh, from November 5th, 2021. And this is an article about a musician who's been accused of all of this terrible alleged abuse, and the musician's name is Marilyn Manson. And he is one of the most famous and established and known Satanists in the music industry. The article uh, is titled, Marilyn Manson's Accusers detail his alleged abuse he's so much worse than his persona and his persona is horrifying if you've ever seen him he's horrific he's terrifying and they say he's so much worse in reality than his persona in other words it's not just a stage act it's who he really is court records reviewed by the la times and nearly two dozen interviews portray manson as a transgressive artist who mistreated and isolated women. For three decades, goth rock singer Marilyn Manson reveled in his image as the ultimate pop culture villain. In the U.S. District Court in downtown Los Angeles, the British-born actor Esme Bianco is waging a legal battle to prove that Manson's menacing persona was all too real. Bianco's federal lawsuit filed April 30th alleges sexual assault sexual battery, and human trafficking beginning in February 2009 when Manson flew her to L.A. to shoot a video for his song, I Want to Kill You Like They Do in the Movies. That was the name of his song, I Want to Kill You Like They Do in the Movies. And he flew her in in 2009 to be an actress in his video, his music video that he made for his song, I Want to Kill You <clears throat> Like They Do in the Movies. The video never materialized. Instead, the 39-year-old says, over the course of four days, Manson locked her in a room, beat her with a whip, and shocked her with electricity in his frigid home in Los Angeles. The Game of Thrones star alleges in her lawsuit that she tolerated a number of abuses, including forced labor, sleep depri deprivation, and rape. After Manson offered to help secure a U.S. work visa, then threatened to obstruct the process when she didn't meet his demands. Manson, whose legal name is Brian Hugh Warner, said the claims are horrible distortions of reality. But then again, he's a Satanist, and Satanists lie through their teeth. Whatever they say, it's usually the opposite of what they say that is the truth. Skipping ahead in the article. Long before he became one of America's most notorious rock musicians, Manson was Brian Warner a gawky metalhead from Ohio who dreamed of revenge against his schoolyard tormentors. He fused two names, that of Hollywood icon Marilyn Monroe and white supremacist, satanic, I would add, cult leader Charles Manson into a persona fit for a horror film. On the 1994 single titled Lunchbox, Manson recalls fending off bullies by swinging an aluminum Kiss Army lunchbox. And he quotes, he says, I want to be a big rock and roll star so no one will blank with me. And you could fill in the blank. He sings. Manson, then 25, was signed to Nothing Records, an imprint of Interscope helmed by Nine Inch Nails' Trent Reznor. Another alleged Satanist, Nine Inch Nails. On platinum albums including Antichrist Superstar and Mechanical Animals, Manson cultivated a character part Alice Cooper, part androgyny glam monster that antagonized the religious right and enraptured teenagers. Throughout his career, Manson has had 10 top 
LPs, 10, top 10 LPs, and played in festivals all over the world. He's very famous. He's very well-liked, and he's, uh, he he's, he's always sells out his concerts and so forth. He's a full-on, full-blown Satanist. In 2007, ex-Manson keyboardist Stephen Gregory Beer Jr., a.k.a. Madonna Wayne Gacy, sued Manson for allegedly misappropriating band funds to buy Nazi paraphernalia, human skin masks. These would be masks you would put over your face made out of real human skin and a child's skeleton to display in his home. The suit was settled out of court. Manson's star waxed and waned in the 2000s. Burned out on his commercial music career, he wrote and began directing a film titled Phantasmagoria, The Visions of Lewis Carroll, which was later abandoned. I believe he was just nominated for another Emmy. You could look that up. I think he was just nominated uh, for another music award. I think it was, not an Emmy, what's the music awards? What's the music awards? Emmys are for acting, right? The Grammys. He was just nominated for a Grammy. Even after all this came out, he was nominated for a Grammy. So it goes to show you about uh, the influences. Thank you. The influences in Hollywood. In a 2009 interview, and I'm skipping through. It's a very long article. I'm skipping ahead. In a 2009 interview, Manson told Spin Magazine that during a period of separation, he phoned Wood. This is another one of his girlfriends. He phoned Wood 158 times. And he cut himself with a razor blade for each phone call. Quote, I have fantasies every day about smashing her skull in with a sledgehammer, he said, unquote. Yeah, he's a Satanist. Another woman who is unidentified said in a May lawsuit filed in L.A. County Superior Court, and this is really gross, but I'm going to read to you what it says. It's L.A. Times. That Manson raped her in 2011 inside his blacked-out Los Angeles home. According to the lawsuit, Manson bragged that he would get away with it if he murdered her. The plaintiff said she feared for her life when Manson forced her to watch Groupie, a never-released short film. In it, Manson is said to have held a young woman at gunpoint, whipped her, and forced her to drink urine on camera. And there's more that I'm not going into here uh, because this is a church service. But uh, he's a full-blown Satanist. He was just nominated for another Grammy. He has 10, top 10 uh, uh, music um, uh, songs that, that he has become uh, well-known for and notorious uh, for as well. So Satanism, um, we, we, we know that it is just it's just increasing with time. It's not diminishing. Even as we looked at earlier with the satanic t-shirts, popularized being sold to teenagers. I mean, things are just, we're becoming so desensitized to all of this. It's just becoming normal. And this is not just part of their, uh, you know, persona to sell albums. This is who these people really are. Uh, another article. This is in uh, Fodor's Travel, F-O-D-O-R-S, Travel. And uh, this was dated July 8th, 2021. This is another long article, but I'm just going to share a few uh, excerpts from this article with you, the first part of it. And the title of this article is Salem's Satanic Temple Has a Satanic Chef. And we talked to him. They interviewed the chef for the Satanic Temple uh, in Salem, Massachusetts, the same place where the uh, evil demonic satanic goat baby came from and if you look at the picture he has an upside down cross right here behind him as he is making food for all of the satanists at the satanic temple chef adam ostrovsky conjures up diabolical recipes and food events which champion outsider identities and push back against satanic panic conspiracies Instead of having a catchphrase like BAM, the satanic chef, also known as Adam Stravinsky, begins each episode of his web cooking show by burning the Holy Bible. Sometimes he'll tear out pages and fling them into 
uh, he'll tear up pages and fling them into the flames of his walk. He starts every episode of his web show by burning a Bible and, and setting these uh, pages of the Bible uh, in his walk on fire. If he's feeling particularly devilish, the chef might dice up scorched verses with his satanic temple membership card and snort them up his nose. Very normal things that people do, right? This is normal. The article writes it like it's just a normal day at the park. Ostrovsky is the official cook of the Satanic Temple, known as TST, the federally recognized non-theistic religion founded by Lucian Greaves and Malcolm Jari, sport, sporting long uh, jet black hair and arms covered in tattoos. The Satanic Chef is known for conjuring up demonic food events at TST's Salem headquarters, including a devil's dinner with blindfolded rituals and tarot card-themed cocktails. Quote, I use shock value when creating food to liberate us from religious indoctrination, unquote, Ostrovsky explains. However, there's much more to satanic cooking than, micro than microwaving Bibles, which he does do on a TST TV episode before teaching viewers how to make charred broccolini. As a chef and a Satanist, Ostrovsky has dedicated his life to affirming those who fall outside the conventional norms and advocating for social causes in a spirit of benevolence. And then he goes on to talk about how he became, uh, how he was bullied and how he later uh, was a dropout and how he got interested uh, in the devil and the paranormal. He cites Anton LaVey's The Satanic Bible, uh, Herman Hesse's, uh, Hesse's uh, Siddhahara, among uh, other books. So we're going we're gonna to stop there. But this is, this is becoming, we are becoming desensitized. This is a travel, a travel magazine. Or, uh, yeah, it's a travel magazine where they're documenting the food that people can eat at the Satanic Temple. Now, Satanists also eat blood. They also eat humans. They also sacrifice humans, and they sacrifice animals. So um, who knows what else they eat in their uh, diabolical recipes there, uh, but it's not just uh, charbroiled, you know, scripture. And I want to I want to read one more article here on this subject as we wrap up this this session. Uh, this this kind of goes hand in hand with this whole idea of satanic worship, of the worship of death, and really of the post Christian uh, West. And this is. From Popular Mechanics, this uh, magazine, Popular Mechanics, this was dated, this article was dated December 9th of 2021, and the headline of this article is, as, uh, as I continue, a new teleportation pod makes assisted death painless and euphoric. In other words, uh, physician-assisted suicide. And it all happens in a 3D printed capsule that looks like a mini spaceship. A Swiss company has manufactured a suicide pod meant to make voluntary death a painless, even euphoric experience. The pod uses nitrogen gas to cause death. After death, the biodegradable pod can be used as a coffin. Imagine getting into a futuristic purple 3D printed capsule. You lie down comfortably inside it, and then an intercom system asks you some very simple icebreaker questions. Who are you? Where are you? Do you know what happens if you press this button? Once you've answered the questions, you are free to press the big red button featured prominently to your right. Ten minutes later, you will not be in space, as you might be imagining, but safely on the ground, Technically speaking, you will not be at all. It's a suicide machine. Instead, this capsule transports you to death. Exit International, a Winelli, Australia-based nonprofit, designed the so-called Sarco, short for sarcophagus, suicide pods. The company advocates for the legalization of uh, suicide, voluntary or uh, physician-assisted suicide. It says, it does have a futuristic look as though it's a vehicle you would be traveling or carrying us somewhere, says 
Philip Nietzsche, or Nietzsche, founder of Exit International, it adds a sense of celebration and ceremony to a person's death, he says. Sarko works like this. When you press the death teleportation button, a canister of liquid nitrogen, which sits in a stand tucked below the capsule, floods the interior with nitrogen gas, causing oxygen levels to drop to less than 5% in one minute. Unlike gas chambers in which the person inside inhales poisonous gases like hydrogen cyanide or Zyklon B, inert nitrogen is not toxic. It has no smell. In fact, nitrogen actually comprises 78% of the air we breathe. So there you have it. Legalized suicide uh, in Switzerland, made by an Australian company, um, that's going to be probably shipped to people all over the world via the internet uh, now that they are uh, made available. So uh, you'd have to be in a post-Christian world uh, where you would celebrate suicide, the taking and cutting short of, of a gift of life because every life is a gift from God and suicide is, is actually murdering yourself. It's, it's self-murder is what suicide is is and i believe still to this day the roman catholic church says if someone commits suicide they cannot be buried uh in a catholic cemetery and there is no salvation uh, that was the whole point of uh, shakespeare's romeo and juliet why it was such a tragedy because uh, uh she committed suicide and then he committed suicide and there was no saving either of them they were damned to hell eternally so uh, it's only in a satanic post-christian world where this would be normal news in uh, popular mechanics magazine and being celebrated as a good thing. We certainly must be getting very, very close uh, to the end. I want to read just a couple of, of more verses here as we wrap up this second session and have another break. We were reading Revelation chapter 12 earlier, and I skipped over Revelation 12, 11. Let's go back there as we uh, conclude this message. And they overcame him, the devil, the dragon, the beast. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and that they did not their lo love their lives even unto the death. And so how are the people overcoming Satan during the tribulation period? The tribulation saints, because they, they uh, are covered by the blood of the lamb. They must be covered by the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, to take away their sins. By the word of their testimony, that they were living epistles, that they were actually living out their faith, and they were willing to die for what they believed in. They loved not their lives even unto death. Jesus reminds us, as he's talking about these things, uh, back in Luke chapter 21 and verse 25, and this is where we conclude this message. Jesus says, There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, the distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. This is at his second coming. He says, now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Jesus is saying, we're not going to be here to see all of this come to fruition, all of it come to completion, to its end. The signs and the sun, the moon, the stars, the distress of nations, the perplexity of the sea, the waves raging, men's hearts failing them for fear because of the expectation of the things which are coming upon the earth because the powers of the heavens are going to be shaken. Jesus tells us, when you begin to see these things happen, when you begin to see the birth pangs happen, he says, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. The church will not be here for the things of the tribulation period. We're going to see the signs. We're going to begin to see the uh, signs all coming together and, and, and all uh, basically coming together as one in the last days where they're all happening all at once with greater frequency and intensity. But we're not going to see it all uh, concluded. We're going to be with Christ when he comes back. He comes back for his church at the, at the rapture. He comes back with his church at his second coming, which is, we believe, seven years later after the tribulation period begins. And then Jesus says this in verse 34, 
to us. He says, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighted down with sexual carousing, drunkenness, the cares of this life, the worries of this life, that that day come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We, are, we have an escape plan. God has an escape plan, a rescue plan for his church. We're not going to be here for the tribulation period, but we will see the signs as we get closer and closer to the time of the end. So how should we be living? We shouldn't be weighed down with sexual carousing. We shouldn't be practicing drunkenness. We shouldn't be worried about the cares of this life, but we should be seeking uh, to be right with him, living a right life, uh, because he could come at any moment for his church. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you promise us in your word uh, that these things are going to happen, Lord, but we're not going to be here when they're all fulfilled for the culmination of them, Lord. You're going to come for us first, Lord. You, you tell us when you begin to see these things happen, when the birth pangs start, look up because your redemption draws near. And, and you tell us to pray that we might escape all these things that are coming upon the earth. We thank you, Lord. You've not appointed us unto wrath, but unto salvation. First Thessalonians 5 9 tells us. And so, Lord, we eagerly await and anticipate your return for us, Lord. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.